ways. Perhaps how they don't exist, at least in the way that we think they do. So commonly people are using calorie trackers to identify how much food they are taking in each given day. However, food labels were added in 1973 and they actually added the calorie amounts in each of those and that included macronutrients, vitamins and minerals. Not all of them but just a select few handful. So it's seen as the overarching guide to determine the energy contained within food and ultimately if you well the idea is if you adapt the calorie amount it will change your body composition. The concept seems sensible at the onset at least the average person calories in calories out eat less exercise more that's essentially what it comes down to the seco myth however how many times have we seen our friends and family in a calorie deficit but not lose body fat that equates to the amount of the calories that they have reduced so supposedly there are three and a half thousand calories in a pound of fat this already is completely untrue um if it were the case anyway so it's actually 4086 this is simple maths here it's not anything out of the ordinary or bizarre so 454 grams equals one pound now you times that by nine calories so they, they think there's nine calories in a gram of fat 4086 calories <laughs> you know as simple as that many supposed experts think that there are 586 calories less and it's three and a half thousand calories um, they say it's because of the water content now when we lose body fat how often are we talking about losing fat versus fat and water again it falls flat on its face so that's completely untrue anyway so you know that's a that's a viewpoint so by default it is very obvious that this isn't true we would obviously say to lose one pound of fat of weight we would have to create a three and a half thousand calorie deficit not true so that's that i'm gonna stop rambling about that point now so legislation dictates in many countries around the world that there can be a plus or minus 20 percent margin of error for the calorie amounts on food labels this is hardly an accurate measurement so if you think there would be a thousand calories in say a packet of biscuits it can actually be 1200 or it could be 800 that's a massive difference you know so again calories falls flat in this place next people believe there are four calories per gram of protein and carbohydrate false again protein has a much higher thermic effect perhaps 20 to 30 percent compared to carbohydrates which is probably around five to ten percent fat is around zero to three percent so there we can see protein could be actually three calories per gram um, carbs could be whatever the math is um, 3.6 calories per gram and fat could be just under nine calories now the type of saturation that a fat has will also affect the thermic effect so you've got to take that into consideration as well therefore the 449 calorie per gram approach principle is completely front of the window further adding insult to injury to proponents of the seco model people often tell me it's not perfect but it's a measurement we have it's a measurement the wrong measurement is one measurement of a different currency so that idea falls flat on its face immediately calories are a measurement of heat we don't use grams to work out how much petrol to put in an engine we'd use liters or gallons so the problem here is calories were calculated using a closed thermodynamic system it's a complex equation which i won't pretend to know off the top of my head but it doesn't stay true or hold true in the human being. We are an open thermodynamic system. We lose heat, we gain heat. 
we have counteracting hormones that affect nutrient partitioning, so how it goes into fat versus muscle. The body uses ATP as its energy currency. It cannot and can never, ever, ever absorb calories. So you heard me ramble on about this for a little bit, and you know I think that should kind of make my standpoint here clear. But what is the solution? You know, it's all good for me saying this, but what are we meant to use? Um, now, this is something I've been a proponent on for a very long time. And it's actually what bodybuilders have been using for decades. Now, they tend to use meal plans. So, for example, they might have 200 grams of chicken breast, 200 grams of rice, and 50 grams of broccoli, for example. Um, now, all they'd do to alter their body composition is perhaps increase the protein amount or perhaps decrease the fat amount or any combination of above and then we'll also do something with the carbohydrate amounts so I'm going to try and provide the solution to this problem so generally my viewers consume a carnivorous diet with very little to no intake of processed foods this is helpful to us as a collective as we can alter our food intake or just by having more or less eggs, steak, chicken thighs, milk, whatever it is. This does not eliminate, but it does reduce the margin of error that I mentioned earlier about food tracking. So for example, you go and purchase one pound of ribeye steak, six eggs, and a 113 gram stick of butter. That is an arbitrary quantity, it's not the point here, but as a whole, we have somewhere around 130 grams of protein, 4 grams of carbohydrate, and 190 grams of fat. Of course, before any pedantic folks comment, there will be some variance in the composition of these foods. You know, how big is the egg? How, how much fat is in the steak? You know, there's different cuts of fat trimmings that you can get. That's, the, that's besides the point I'm trying to make here. The point is, if you're on a mixed diet and you go from eating two Snickers bars a day to one, you have decreased your food intake, evidently. If you do this for long enough, you'll see a difference in your body composition. Most likely, you'll lose body fat. Now, if you eat that amount each day and lose body fat, fat you do not need to be in your body to be healthy, you can be certain that that method was effective. You might continue this for a few more days or even a few weeks. However, there'll be a point where your body reacts to this through various feedback mechanisms. It will say, I'm hungry, this is uncomfortable, feed me now. What happens thereafter will affect your health, physical and mental performance and so on. So this is where an experienced nutrition coach comes in, like myself perhaps, Bart K, or another that will consult you with and guide you towards whatever your goal is. We would use objective and subjective measures to identify what you need to address and show you the tools that you have available to reach that goal. Now, before we wrap this up, I'll lay out some information I came across recently. This is the mass balance equation. The concept is not my own, and I do not take any credit for it. This is just something I'm bringing across to show you guys. So, there was a study performed in 2020 which compared the energy balance theory, which is the SECO model, with the mass balance model. Early, the energy balance theory is basically calories in, calories out, and the mass balance model is looking at the total macronutrient grams of food and explains that reducing these total grams reduces body weight. You know, if you put less food in, you'll be a lower body weight. It seems to make sense. The author of the study, now, he states that body weight fluctuations are ultimately dependent on the difference between a daily nutrient mass intake and daily mass excretion. For example, if you go from eating 200 grams of protein and 200 grams of fat per day to 100 grams of each, you will lose weight. If looking to improve your body composition, however, this is another situation where consulting with a professional comes in handy, and they will tell you which one, or both, to alter. So I'm just going to plug in this graph which shows you pretty much what the, the study was entailing. I'll link a website below which you can browse at your own leisure. The gist of it is that your weight will be more predictable if you use the mass balance model than the energy balance, calories in, calories out idea. 
To simplify this even further, if you take in one gram of protein, your mass will increase by one gram. The amount lost when this is excreted will be affected by how the body utilizes this one gram of protein. Now, it could contribute to new muscle tissue, grow more hair, nails, skin perhaps. The, the balance of your weight can also be affected by losing dead skin cells. So, you know, there's a lot to unpack here. So it's not as clear cut as eating a gram, gaining a gram of protein, you know, it's, it doesn't quite work that way. But when the protein is eventually used, excreted, oxidized, whatever, that is a point where the law of conservation of mass changes. The mass is now somewhere else in a different atomic structure, but it, it has not vanished. In the comments of this video, I expect to see someone say, well, I counted calories and I managed to lose weight. Yep. All I would say at this point in the video is that you have reduced your macronutrient grams, so you affected your mass balance, which caused you to lose weight. Calories are, after all this time, still a measurement of heat. I hope this video is useful, and if you take anything away from it, please consider this. The simplest explanation is usually the right one. Novacular Akane. Thank you.